In this lecture, we are going to set up WebSocket for our client and our server application. Basically, using WebSocket, we want to connect our client to the server and we want to keep that connection open for real-time data transfer. And to do that, first we need to import some package in our client application as well as in server application. So let's go to VS Code. So in our server application, we need to install a package called socket.io and in our client application, in our React application, we need to install another package which is socket.io client. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Let's first go ahead and let's install socket.io client for our client side application. For that, I'll go to our terminal. Let me clear everything here. So I am in the client folder right now which is our folder for front-end project. There I'm going to type npm install and we want to install socket.io hyphen client. Let's press enter. So it is installing that package and that package has been installed. Now let me go ahead and let me open one more terminal here and there first we will move to our backend project folder our express project folder so that is in the server folder let's press enter so now we are in the server folder there we are going to install socket.io package so we installed socket.io hyphen client for our react application now we are installing socket.io for our node.js application our Node.js application is present in the server folder. So there I am installing socket.io and our React application was present in the client folder. So there I installed socket.io hyphen client. So let's go ahead and let's install socket.io for our Express application. Now after the installation, let's also go ahead and let's restart our front end application. So first I will stop this process by pressing Ctrl C. And then let's go ahead and let's restart it by typing npm start command. So this is going to restart our React application. So our React application has been started. Now let's go to our server folder. And there also, let's first stop the process by pressing Ctrl C. And here I'll type Y and press Enter. And let's go ahead and let's restart this Node.js server. All right, so our Node.js application is listening on port number 5000 and DB connection to our MongoDB database is also successful. So now whenever a client will send a request to our Express application, it is going to establish a TCP IP connection and that TCP IP connection will stay open as long as the client or the server closes that connection. Okay, so that connection will keep on open. And to test that connection, let's go ahead and let's write some code in our front-end application as well as in our back-end application. So let's first go to our front-end application. There in the home component, first I am going to import IO from socket IO dot client. Okay. And now we want to use this IO, which we have imported from socket IO dot client package. So in here, let's go ahead and let's create another variable. Let's call it socket. And this IO is a function. So we are going to call it. And there we are going to specify the URL of our server application. The URL where our express application is running. So it is localhost colon 5000. Our express application is running on localhost port number 5000. So that I am specifying here. So this will make sure that our client application is connected to our server. Now what we are going to do is, as we learned in our last lecture, the socket.io works on event-driven architecture. So we are going to emit some events from our client and we are going to listen to those events on our server. Whenever that event will happen on the client, we are going to react to that event on the server. And in the same way, Whenever an event is raised from the server, we are going to react to that event on the client. And that we are going to understand it practically. So here we have created a connection using the socket. Now let's go to our server application. So here let me save the changes and let's go to our server application, to our node application. 
and they are also we are going to import so for that let's go ahead and let's create a variable and let's actually do it after we have used this express.json middleware so here i'm going to create a variable i'm going to call it as server okay and here we are going to require the http package first so this http it is a built-in package in node.js and on that we are going to call create server and to this create server we are going to pass this app object so here we are creating a server using this app object now what we are going to do is we are going to require the socket.io package so here i am creating a variable called io let's go ahead and let's require socket.io okay and this is going to return us a function so this expression here it is going to return us a function let's go ahead and let's call that function and when we are calling this function here we need to pass the server the server which we have created here so that will be the first argument and in the second argument we can specify some options so here we are going to specify course and to that let's pass an object and there let's specify the origin so here we want to whitelist any request which is coming from our react application and our react application it is running on localhost port number 3000 okay then we are also going to specify what type of methods we want to whitelist for that we can specify methods and to this we are going to assign an array and there let's specify that we want to whitelist get and post requests and here it should be methods okay let's save the changes and now instead of using this app variable to listen to requests so if i go to the server folder so here we have our server folder there we are listening to requests on this app but now instead of listening to request on this app we should be listening to request on this server so from here i am going to export server instead of exporting app i'm exporting server here and then in the server.js file let's say we are going to import server from here so i'll rename it as server and now we are going to use this server to listen to the requests okay let's save the changes now let's go ahead and let's test the connection so i'm going to go to app.js file and there after these routes here i am going to listen for an event okay so basically here we are going to test connection the socket connection from client basically we want to check if the connection between the client and the server is established or not using the socket so here we have created this io variable on that io variable we are going to use on method to listen to events and which event do we want to listen here we want to listen to connection event and when this connection event happens we want to execute some code basically let's say we simply want to log a message in the console saying that connected with socket id and then we want to print the socket id so for that that socket id we are going to get in this socket variable so here we are going to get an object for this socket parameter which will contain information related to the socket connection and there we will also have the socket id okay let's save the changes and now if we go to the terminal where our node application is running there you will see we have this message logged that it is listening to request on port number 5000 db connection is also successful and there you will see that it has logged two socket ids we have this message two times now why is that because currently two clients are connected to our server application the first client is connected from chrome from here so this client where john is logged in this browser is connected to our server as well as this edge browser where mary is logged in 
this is also connected to our server so that's why we are seeing two ids here for the socket connection one socket connection is for chrome and one socket connection is for edge okay so in this way our client is now connected to our server and this connection will be open as long as the client or the server closes the connection and using this connection now we can transfer data from client to server or server to client in real time and we will learn how we can do that in our coming lectures now in the next lecture i am going to explain some concepts like emitting an event from the client and listing it on the server as well as emitting an event from the server and listening it to the client so as i have mentioned earlier the socket io uses event driven architecture whenever some event happens on the client we can listen it on the server and whenever an event happens on the server we can listen it on the client and using that we can also transfer data between client and server so let's understand how we can do that in our next lecture this is all from this lecture thank you for listening and have a great day